you will need to stop DCAing, at least at one point, because from that point, you will need to wait a bit and you will need to start taking profit. But where is that point? Until when we can buy and from where we need to sell. Now, I think I know where that point is. Let me show you. Okay, let's start first with the market and after that I will just share with you my whole concept of what is going to happen and when we need to stop this thing and start to take profits or maybe wait a bit and start to take profits. Let's see the Bitcoin chart. As you can see, nothing much is happening except that Bitcoin is now below 20k. It's nothing which we didn't see before and we didn't expect. I didn't expect any rally to be honest and as you can see, it is a textbook downtrend it just broke out from this rising wedge or rising trend line or, or trend zone and now we are going lower and lower we do have some uh, accumulation or distribution uh, actions as you can see it is going sideways and when we are in a downtrend that is a distribution which means it spends some time on the same uh, price target or price range which is now between the 21k or 20 500k and uh, 19,500 and then we will see another drop probably uh, to the 18,500 and then further down until we reach the bottom. Now where will be the bottom? Obviously no one knows but we will need to find somewhere and we will need to be very ballsy about that because it takes a lot of courage and you need to be brave to buy in into the big red. That will be the time when everyone is saying that Bitcoin is going to zero, Bitcoin is shit and there is no future for the crypto and you miss the opportunity to be rich or to increase your wealth. That will be the time when I will buy with a larger amount and until then I am DCAing. But where will be the point when we can stop DCAing because from there we can uh, see only upward aggressive movement that is the question that is what we need to find out and for that i i just created this other chart i think it has some common sense now i think in september bitcoin will go down september is notoriously bad for bitcoin usually bitcoin is going down it is just dropping 10 20 30 percent in every september whether that be in a bull market or in a bear market however in november as you can see on the 8th of november there is midterm elections when they are voting in the us for the senators now the thing is that the November rally is not because of the hype or because of the news. The thing is that the senators have some campaigns, they have some sponsors, some money flows in, and in the first couple of months of their re-elected term, let's say, they need to keep their promises, meaning that the investors, the people with the money behind the curtain companies who invested in these campaign uh, runs, let's say, on these campaign actions, they need to get back some of the money, meaning that before, in September, the assets go down, they invest, the senators will make some proposals, some bills where they will just help the companies, let's say, they shares to rally in November, they will get back all the money they invested, maybe a bit profit, not maybe a lot of profits, and then they can just start again in January when everything goes down and it is running that way until May. Now, how crypto comes here? Because this is in the general market. As we know, crypto has a halving season and I will be honest, I don't expect anything to happen in the next one or two years. The reason is the inflation, the Fed is tightening, they are increasing the rate hikes. Uh, I don't think that everything is priced in. So far what happens and maybe the next uh, rate hike, the 0.75% is already priced in. But if we go to the 2, 2.5%, 2 that is probably will cause another drop. Now, if you want to know what I cooked up here in this chart, you will find this very strange signs and that is the star and the like. The star is the US election and the like is the Bitcoin halving. Now the Bitcoin halving will happen next time somewhere in May. It is the beginning of May but it doesn't really matter by the day too much and the next election is in November 2024. Right now it's the midterm, okay? it's for the senators not for the president. But if I'm mistaken just correct me in the comments. Therefore what I think will happen is that Bitcoin will go side, at least sideways from here. We might see some relief rallies because we saw them here as well. And as you can see, if we just zoom in in the 2008 rallies, that was a 56%. And we could see in 2019 that the Bitcoin's price went up 300%. 
Now, I don't think that we should be fooled by that. Obviously, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't use it because if we are DCAing until that point and if we have the courage to DCA in this zone after miners capitulated, after the Business Insider, the CNN, the ESPN, even the ESPN is writing that Bitcoin is going to zero and crypto is shit and it has no future. If you have the courage to DCA in this time, then you can probably double, triple your money only with Bitcoin in the upcoming six months. Now, if we don't DCA that aggressively because we just don't catch the bottom, which could easily happen, we need to find a point when we can stop. Because at one point we need to stop DCAing, we need to find a way to take profits. Because yeah, we can DCA as much as we want, we can buy as much as we want. If we don't know where to sell or we don't sell at all, well, all effort and hopium and stress is just thrown out the window. We need to capitalize on this effort we put in. Therefore, as you could see in 2020, and we can say that in 2020, we had a Black Swan event. Honestly, from my point of view, that was just another very good entry point for those who had the courage to do that. Otherwise, it would not have changed anything because as you can see here, the price just continued from where it started or from where it came. It went sideways for more than one year. However, something happened and that was the Bitcoin halving. As you can see here on my chart, the like is the Bitcoin halving. We like that. We like that because the uh, supply is getting scarcer and scarcer and... The price is at least doubling. Now, the halving, of course, is not enough. We need something else as well. We need the hype, we need the FOMO. The FOMO comes in only here somewhere, and uh, it is only for people who want to get rich quick. But hey, this is the thing. Those who build in the bear market and go through the stress and effort, they will gain enough knowledge to know when to sell, or at least to push the grid down and sell when they are in good profits. If you recover your capital, that is already a good thing. If you make some profit, if you double, triple, 10x, 100x your capital, well, you are in the fairy tale. So what is happening in 2024? Obviously, the Bitcoin halving will happen in May and in November we have the election. Now, this is again the same story as it will probably happen this year in November because very big campaign will run, even more money will flow in. The companies which fuel with money the electoral campaigns will want to make back their, their money, will want to make sure that their... Uh, profit will be safe and they can capitalize on the investment because for them this is an investment right if they want to make sure that the right people are in the chair and the right people are calling the shots which are in favor of those companies who invested in the campaigns who gave the money right you have the cash you call the shots now obviously BlackRock is one of these companies and as you know, or you probably don't, I don't know, in 2008 when the government needed to bail out a lot of uh, banks like JP Morgan, BlackRock helped with the cash. And that is something which was kept in the shadows because BlackRock doesn't need and doesn't want any advertisement. Now, it doesn't matter right now, uh, we already know what happened and we already know that these two things, the halving and the campaign is coming. So here is the question, what we need to endure until then? Because believe me, this will be a very bumpy road, a hard one, and we need to keep our cash safe because yes recession is coming it's already here but we didn't see the big boom we didn't see that people are suffering we didn't see a big unemployment rate and we just didn't see that people don't go to the mall or they just put down their car because they just can't afford petrol for example we still can see the big spending and until we can see the big spending inflation will go higher and the recession will not hit now here is the today's price on the S&P 500 and in yellow you can see the 2008 recession and what I'm watching here is this part this is what I'm waiting for I don't know if this is gonna be or it will be a bit later I have no idea just to give you as a reference you can see that between these two peaks uh, we spent three months and so if this can happen that we will just go a bit lower and we come back in the next three months and maybe in January we just hit a very big low this depends what will happen with the war in Russia, with the inflation, with the energy prices. Energy prices are, will be very important to that because Europe in a big shit. However, I have no idea when this will happen. Now, if we measure the 2008 recession, which was for very different reasons, but the outcome probably will be the same, you can see here that between the peak and the bottom, uh, we spent 515 days, that is one and a half a year. 
if we just check here from the peak this year, I mean, it was in January, so it's very easy to calculate. We already spent 247 days, meaning that we might have a bottom next year around summer or autumn. I think it will be July, August. We will see. Now, those people who have cash in this zone, or if you go back to Bitcoin and they have cash in this zone, in these, those are the ones who will make big money in the bull run. Now, you can't really do that if you don't have cash, obviously. And I understand that many people are living from month to month and that is not the best. And I'm not saying that being in that position is anyone's fault. But here are a couple of tricks which you can do if you are in that position to avoid being hit by a recession even harder. If you have more than one car, for example, and none of them are bringing money, meaning that none of them are for a, for a business, they are just expenses then maybe you could sell one don't buy anything where you don't have the cash okay many people are buying washing machines tvs uh, i don't know go to holiday on loans i think we should skip that for some time if you are in the debt in a recession that could be very hard and you can lose even more now i don't know how many people who are watching me are in that situation or near that situation but but if you want a couple of tips to prepare for the recession let me know in the comments because for example in 2008 i remember that in my family we had a grocery store and we've been hit very hard due to some very bad decisions those memories are very clear to me right now and i can do maybe two videos on what not to do when you are in a recession so be prepared and let's wait these two years. I know it's not the best. I know it's uh, it's a long time, but two years can fly by very fast if we are focusing and if we are preparing the right way. This was all for today. Thank you for watching and yeah, see you next time.